In this video, I'm gonna take you through the step-by-step -step process of how to correctly set up your Performance Max campaigns. Now, this video is part of my Get Google Ready series for 2025, where I not only take you through how to set up your Google Ads campaigns the right way, but also how to optimize them. Now, when it comes to your Performance Max campaigns, your Performance Max campaigns are what I call a secondary campaign. And what I mean by that is that in most cases, I would not start with a Performance Max campaign. I would either start with search, or if you're in the e-commerce space, you would start with a combination of search and shopping. The reason for that is because the way that Performance Max was designed was to look at what conversions you're generating in your Google Ads account, and then look to generate extra conversions. With the problem being, if you don't have any conversions, data, Google doesn't really have any strong starting points. So if you can think of it like this, is that your search and shopping campaigns, you can be really targeted with the keywords that you're generating, the keywords you're targeting, your ad copy. With Performance Max, you don't have as much control. That doesn't need to be a bad thing, but in order for Google to have a bit of an idea on who are the people who would be interested in your products or services, it works to firstly have some conversions happening in your account. Now, as a really, really rough guide, because people say, how many conversions? Generally, you wouldn't want to be starting a Performance Max campaign until after the first three months. And where you're generating at least 30 conversions a month. And also from there, you'd have a clear idea on what are the best converting ad copies and landing pages for your business. Once you've got all that, ready to go. What we're gonna be doing is now I'm gonna take you through the step-by-step -step process of how to set up a Performance Max campaign. Now for a Performance Max campaign, this works for both lead gen and also e-commerce brands. But with the e-commerce brand, you've also got the option to set in a shopping feed. And I'm gonna show you how both things work. Now, if you do miss any of these steps, do not stress because if you follow the link in the description below, you can get access to my Performance Max setup guide, which has all of the screenshots and it explains all of these individual steps. So as I said, we'll be going through this quite quickly. Don't stress because you can get that guide. All right, let's now jump into a screen share so I can show you how to set up your Performance Max campaigns. Now, before we get into this process, what I would recommend is that you do have your keyword research ready and also your ad copy. And then you've also got your images and YouTube links. And in your setup guide, I've got in here the landscape and square sizes that you need along with the PX sizes and also the file types. And if you are an e-commerce brand and you're wanting to use Performance Max to connect to your shopping feed, you do need to make sure that you've already got your shopping feed connected into your Google Ads. And if you go to this link in through here, it takes you through the steps of connecting Google to your e-commerce store and you can follow the steps through there. But with all of that said, let's now jump into Google Ads so I can show you this step-by-step -step process. Where you wanna be going in from here is you wanna go, firstly, select new campaign. Now for Performance Max, remember that it has a built-in smart bidding strategy. So you can either do maximize conversion value or maximize conversions. And eventually there will also be a profit-based bidding. Now, because it's locked into one of those two, I do really recommend that you choose either leads or sales. Sales if you're e-commerce, leads if you're lead generation or a service business. I'm gonna pick leads, but remember, I am gonna go back and show you how to do the sales option. And then from there, you want to select your conversion goals. Now, let's just say, for example, you don't want this conversion action to be selected what you could do is you could remove it. Now, the one thing I wanna stress there is that this does not remove the goal from your account. It just means that Google is not gonna be using that goal for its bidding. So it won't be factoring in any removed goals. It only factors in the goals that you've left selected for maximized conversions or maximized conversion value. Then go through and click continue and we wanna select performance max. What will happen here, this is where you see two different options. If you do not have a shopping feed connected, you'll see where you can enter in the final URL. But if you do have a shopping feed connected, what will happen in through here, we've selected performance max and we've selected sales. You've got a section in here where you can add in your merchant center. So first in here, we'll set up the URL URL, but that's giving you both examples. And then you need to add in a campaign name. Now, when it comes to campaign names, as I always say, what you wanna do is you wanna have a name that makes sense to you so that when you're optimizing further down the track, you know exactly what that campaign is about. So we're just gonna call this one leads and Pmax. For e-commerce brands, what I would generally do in through here is I would name the product category or if it was for the whole store, we'd say something like all, just so you know exactly what you're looking at targeting there. Then you go through, click continue. Now these steps are gonna be the same, whether it's for lead gen or whether it's for e-commerce. When it comes to bidding, as I said, you can only choose conversions or conversion value. For lead generation or service, we would go conversions. For e-com, we would go conversion value. For lead generation, you can also do conversion value if you are using a system where you input your leads back into Google Ads, especially if you're using a third-party CRM, something like HubSpot or 
or something like Salesforce, you can definitely use conversion value. But for this one, we're just gonna go conversions. Whether you choose conversions or conversion value, I would not start with a target. So for conversions, it's gonna be target CPA. For conversion value, it's gonna be target ROAS. And the reason for why I don't do that, remember, Performance Max campaigns are all about driving extra conversions. Google will recommend to set a target. I don't recommend. The reason being is because once you set that target, you're telling Google that's what you want to achieve. And many times we've seen with Performance Max is that over the first six months, you can be in a really steep conversion increase. So we've had some campaigns which have gone from five conversions, 20 conversions, 40 conversions, and then up to over 100 conversions. And if we had to set a target CPA or a target ROAS, it would have limited that spend. So you don't want to be setting a target until you're seeing a stabilization of your results. One of the things which is a common thing that I do is that I will set the camp, the performance max campaign to target for only new customers. Because this is a training account, I don't have a big enough audience because you need to have people over a thousand. So what I would do through there is that I would usually set it up to bid for new customers. But if you don't want to do that, you can just delete that blank. Then you go through to next. This is where you need to start targeting your locations. So let's just say we want to go for Australia. We would add that in through there. But if you wanted to add in extra countries, it's just a matter of typing these in. So but let's just keep that for Australia. Now, when it comes to automatically created assets, so with Performance Max, as a starting point, you need to understand that you don't have full control. So if you are in an industry and you need full control over your ad copy, Performance Max is probably not gonna be something that I'd recommend. The reason being is because it is adding more and more automated text. And basically that's coming from what Google is picking up from the user. The only other thing that you may wanna add in here is if you go down to more settings for Performance Max, I'll add in my own brand as a brand exclusion. If you don't have any brand lists, all you need to do is you just go new brand list, write the name in here, and then it usually takes about two or three weeks for that to come through. So what that does do is that we're then stopping the performance back spending on our internal brand. And that's generally the only optimizations that I'll add in there. The only other one that you may wanna add in is when it comes to the URL, if you wanna block out any URL exclusion. So what this could be is especially if you're on e-commerce and you are using a performance max campaign and you've got one for women's apparel and one for men's apparel, what you may wanna do is you may wanna create some rules that make sure that the women's campaign only goes to women's clothes, men's campaign only goes to men's clothes. And then, so that's the way that we would go through and add in those exclusions. Once you're happy with all those settings, go through to next. Now, Google will recommend to go through this asset generation. Generally, I skip this. And the reason being is because we start our Performance Max campaign as a secondary campaign. So we've already got data on our best performing headlines and ad copies. With the asset group name, what I would just do there as well, I've just put in leads or sales, but generally think of your asset group names. You want to be calling your asset group names like your ad group names, remembering so that when we're optimizing the account, we know really, really quickly what this asset group is targeting. Now, what I've done here, I've just added in a couple of headlines and a long headlines. I would recommend more, but I'm just doing this just to show you from here. Once again, generally with Performance Max, I've already run some search and shopping campaigns. So I've got an idea of what converts for my business. Then you wanna go through and add some images. With this, you can update these through going to the asset library. We've already got some selected in through here. So I'll just select a couple. We've already got our logos added. Once again, if you need to, you can upload some logos by using this upload function. With videos, I do recommend to add some. And what we've got some in here, we've got some from our YouTube channel. And we just go through and click save. Now, when it comes to signals, the one thing I want to really reinforce is that with the signals, this isn't heavy targeting. So it's not like an exact match keyword where it's heavily targeted. They help guide who sees your ads on Google search and YouTube. So think of it that Google just adds these as recommendations, but I do recommend to add some. Now I've just added a couple in here but I would recommend that you add up to about around about 15 to start. Then you wanna add in some different audience signals. Now, one thing I do recommend with the audience signals is that I would generally use my data that we've got in there. And this just helps to sort of ground, once again, Google is gonna be going beyond these selections, but it gives Google some extra data about the type of people that convert. Other thing that you can do from here is if you feel that you know some interests that would be relevant, if you go to your search campaign, you can see some audiences that have been converting well, you can add them in there. One thing I just wanna make clear as well is that once again, Google just takes these as recommendations. It will go beyond your suggestions. Generally, I won't add in any demographics unless you're dealing with a product that you know is not relevant for that age bracket. So sometimes you may want to you know, increase the age bracket a little bit and target it, say, between like 25 or 54. Then you can add in an audience name. Once again, this is just so you can use it in the future so you know how you've set up that targeting. Go to next. Google will give you a recommended budget, but let's just say we've already set it and we know that we want to be spending $30. So we change that to $30, go through and click next. And then what Google will do from here is it'll see is if there's any issues that you need to fix. So you can see there's issues and there's recommendations. The issues are something that we need to fix. So we'll go through to here. And it's saying we need to add in another description. 
And now that we've added that in, we can go back to the summary and our campaign is ready to publish. The one thing I do want to show you if you're running Performance Max for an e-commerce brand, the one thing that I would do is that once you've set up your initial asset group and your multiple asset groups, you need to make sure that you're going through and refining your listing groups. Now, the benefit of refining your listing groups is what you can then do is that you can, let's just say you've got some different product categories and you're wanting to target specific product categories for different asset groups. What you can do is this is where you select the product. So depending on how you've set up your feed, you could do this by brand, you could do this by your product type, or you could do this by the individual item IDs. It's really gonna come down to how you've set your feed. But the benefit for this is that that way, once you've got your campaign running, is that you can see the data by the different audience groups. And what we've got here is we've got three core products and we're able to see the different data of what's happening in our Performance Max campaigns. And in the setup guide, I've also shown you in through here, is that basically once your campaign is set up, you're then able to go into the asset group section and click on the blue little plus sign. And that's where you set up your new asset groups. And you can also add in those refinements by the subdivision. So once again, what you do is you go into asset groups, you can add in a new asset group. And then once you've got that asset group set up, you can then go through and adjust your listing groups by adding in this subdivision. And that's the process you use to set up your Performance Max campaigns. And that's the step-by-step -step process that you use to set up your Performance Max campaigns. Remember, if you missed any of those steps, don't stress. Just follow the link in the description below and you can get the access to my Performance Max setup guide. As always, it's been an absolute pleasure having you here. My name is Aaron Young from Define Digital Academy. And remember, if you wanna make sure that you don't miss out when I release any of these new videos within my Get Google Ready series, make sure that you don't only subscribe, but you turn on that notification bell so you know exactly when we've released those videos. And if you wanna see all the videos that we've got in the playlist that have set live so far, check out this playlist here. See ya.